Hello, uh, welcome to the Package Manager's Weekly Sync. Uh, I am your host, Aking Brain, in the game of what we did last week, what we're blocked on, what we're going to do next. This is the very first public meeting of the IPFS Package Manager's Working Group. Hello, everyone. We're on YouTube. You can follow us here. Would like us here. I don't know what the interface is like. It's somewhere. It's somewhere here. Somewhere or there. there. Anyway, so we're going to go around the room. Um, but first, can I have a note taker? I can do it. Thanks, Jim. Okay, cool. Uh, so I will go first. Uh, last week, uh, I was in Lisbon with Andrew and the. JS team and the uh, web browsers and GUI teams doing our Q2 AKR planning. Uh, that was really productive, really great. We've got a good handle on kind of the stuff that we want to try and get done in the next quarter. Uh, I'm not blocked in anything. Next, uh, so we've been looking at all the Unix of SV2 um, stuff. It would be really cool to have the metadata feature um, available so that we can do things like mount things on fuse because we need like the last modified time and to preserve file permissions and that kind of stuff um so i don't actually think we need to wait for v2 because v1 has this metadata construct that we could probably use to do that it's never really been implemented so i'm going to have a go at um implementing that for unix the best v1 and see how it see how it looks like um see if we can then feed that back into go as well that would be cool uh People have started using NPM on IPFS, which is great. Uh, it just means that people are finding problems with it, which is also great. Uh, so there are some issues that are being opened, so I'm gonna try and triage some of them, uh, clear the backlog there. Uh, also, the uh, obviously all the you know, chaos starts kicking off. I'm really keen to get NPM on IPFS deployed properly on some kind of container service, because at the moment it's just a bunch of Docker containers that have to manually reboot every now and again because weird stuff happens. Um, the Envy team were amenable to having it running on um, EC2 or, or some other container service. I uh, just need to you know, make myself available to answer any questions that they have about what that would entail so that they can scope out the work for their Q2 stuff. That's likely to be me. Any questions? Andrew. Have you got any metrics on how many people are using NPM on IPFS? No, there's a there's an issue open in the info repo about custom metrics. So we've got like uh, you know the basic kind of CPU memory kind of stuff. Um, so we can roughly derive the load, I guess, but we can't count any actual real numbers. Um, that would be really nice to have. Does AWS tell you about bandwidth usage? It's possible, but I don't have access to board. Um, Any other questions? Okay, I pass the ball over to Andrew. Um, okay, uh, I'm a little bit ill today, so my voice doesn't sound quite as as uh, perky as usual. Uh, I was again with uh, Alex and lots of wonderful people in Lisbon last week doing OKR planning. Um, helping different teams try and align with a package manager's goal, which seemed to go um, pretty well, I think. Uh, we also made all the package manager um, repository public, moved it onto IPFS. I also moved a couple of my experiments onto IPFS Shipyard um, and started kind of linking all those things up. Uh, the And I automated... Uh, the updating of uh, my app on IPFS uh, mirror server. So it is running uh, on a every four hour cron job, which it takes three hours to do an update. So that gives an hour um, spare for overrun. And um, it seemed to be working fine, but it's, it's having some problems today, um, which... I don't fully understand, so I'm going to have to reach out. Um, Molly recommended someone on the Tiger team to look into that um, to try and work out what the hell's going on because it's it seems to have just stopped trying to share anything with anyone else, and I really don't know what's going on there. Um, 
that is kind of a blocker to actually then starting to promote that or even to be able to use it for any other machine can't can't do a uh, apt get update um, from ipfs whilst that machine is not sharing anything that's going on um the next thing i'm planning to do is to put together a blog post uh, and properly announce the package managers working group which then i can point at the different package manager maintainers and start to really get all of those conversations moving um, as well as trying to align with um, some of the IPFS camp plans to see if I can invite some package manager maintainers over there. Uh, still not exactly sure what the what they'd be able to do there because currently there's um, there's no plans for kind of uh, hack spaces directly. It's very it's very um, curated, so still need to work that out before kind of in just inviting everyone there um, to see if there's going to be like a proper space for them. Otherwise, we might need to do something slightly different. I'm not really sure. Uh, but again, mostly speaking to more people is going to be the thing that I'm going to be working on for the next week. Um, and if we can get apt on IPFS working again reasonably, then reaching out to infrastructure to see if we can get uh, that mirrored a few more on a few more machines, maybe using cluster uh, to be able to write a blog post about that and get that stuff. If, if we can get a few machines bootstrapped using it, then the, um, the files that are really like important as in the list of packages will start to be shared across more nodes which then should make everything move a little bit faster even if some of the random packages are only available on that one machine to begin with the more people that are using it the more uh kind of the network effect kicks in and starts to make it more performant um i think that's about it at least on my plate as well as kind of reviewing the OKRs of other um, working groups to see if there's any way that we can be useful for helping people connect the dots and see um, if there are other things to be done related to package management. Jim? Uh, how big is apt on IPFS? I could potentially run it on my machine at home. It's 1.2 terabytes uh, if you wanted to mirror it from the machine that's already um, adding it on there if you wanted to run it yourself right now you need 2.4 terabytes of disk space if you want to mirror it straight from apt because you can't use the file store so you have to do a regular ipfs add which then duplicates it into the ipfs folder okay it's pretty big but actually i have a disk sitting around that's big that big so the, uh, i was looking at debian as well uh, that's considerably larger if we want to do all of the different architectures that Debian supports for all of its binaries. Um, so I'll stick with Ubuntu for now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> five terabytes for that, I think. Hmm. Any other questions? No? Well, I'll pass it on to Jim then. Okay, so um, so on the dynamic data, um, dynamic data and capabilities working group, that's always always a mouthful. Um, we figured out our OKRs, and um, basically, Adine, who's here, and uh, Pedro, they're going to be working um, full time trying to figure out um, the evolution of IPNS, and <clears throat> our um, goals are tied directly to package managers. So we're here, and we want to um, also um, see if there's something we can t maybe take one of the systems you're putting together and see if we can uh, work some IPNS into it in some way, but not like old IPNS, like the new fast IPNS. So uh, Adine can t talk about that a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I saw on your um, sort of like, I don't know, the, the Google Doc on roadmap thoughts that uh, you guys were, were, were okay kicking the can on some of the naming stuff for a while, but it might be that we're actually able to get some of it to be, uh, to be fast enough to, you know, 
do what you need to do. Um, it just sort of depends on what the actual requirements are. Um, so it's just sort of like to learn a little bit more about that. And then we can set up like two of the big things are one performance and two making it easy enough to pin IPNS things. Um, and that don't necessarily require you to just leave the private key sitting online uh, the whole time. Yeah, that's sort of the, the, the basic idea. But I, I, so I don't, it depends on what, what avenues you want to go down for, for building stuff, like what you want to build first and how it can be of use. So I'm not sure how that fits with um, NPM on IPFS, but for the apt one, we're using IPNS to, um, to uh, point at the root of the mirror and then updating that every four hours or so um, for whenever we finish doing an rsync update it seems to be working reasonably well it takes kind of a minute to publish and then maybe like 30 seconds to resolve which isn't the worst thing in the world um especially if we then start putting it on like ubuntu.ipfs.io as a dns link then that should make it read like fast enough for that to be usable um for anyone who's once you solve the other problems related to um, app on IPFS, that it doesn't feel like that's the most pressing thing, but it feels like there are some places that maybe um, the uh, NPM on IPFS could be could use uh, performant naming once on like the precursor that currently it doesn't use the DHT, so. Uh, because it's using JS on IPFS, I don't know if that then throws a spanner in the works. If you were thinking more of doing the work on the Go side, uh, so there, there's going to be work on on both, at least for just sort of regular make IPNS faster. Probably the pinning will be done by a Go daemon, um, just because why not? Uh, it'll be more efficient and it won't affect anyone who wants to write like JS code for web browsers or anything. Uh, but I, I guess the, the thought was, if I understood correctly, a lot of the mirrors um, sort of require the way that you pull the the latest version of everything is you go to some something via like DNS and you pull it down that way um, for the mirror. And it'd be nice to have that decentralized. Um, and then sort of the next step, like sort of step one is have sort of a decentralized system like IPNS doing it, but the key is centrally managed. And like step two is figure out a way to do this where there are multiple keys for multiple registries in a way that uh, users can are not just dependent on like the one guy without explicitly deciding they only want to care what the one guy is publishing. But those, I, that's I'm just not sure like how far out those are for you guys. My feeling is that will probably be something that comes up as soon as we start talking to other package manager maintainers um, that naming and kind of proving out who the owners of the like the trusted data for like what's the current state of the index for a list of packages is going to be like that'll be the the point where it it all becomes much more like interesting. So um, yeah. I have what a thought. So assuming there was there existed this highly performance IPNS um, implementation where you basically have beautiful data on the decentralized web, and um, I think that has a the most interesting ramification is that each user that's uploading the packages to the repositories, um, the, the, the repository itself just, be, just has to become sort of like a trust network. And each, each user can have their own like sort of IPNS link, their own little mini repo, and then it all sort of gets fused together. Um, 
and I, it might be a little bit too early to explore that. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if we could perhaps do something along the lines of trying to create an, like an IPNS record for each and every like NPM maintainer or like to mirror them. I can imagine having um, not only for the um, the creators, but for every individual package being able to have, it's like a mini index of the number of versions that are available for that package and that you have to trust uh, that whoever put those list of versions together was the person who was authorized to publish them. Um, so you could definitely have a name per package. Yeah, sort of like if you if you if you drew the entire schema for npm out on a, on on whiteboard, um, like what parts of it are immutable, which parts of it are immutable, and you know the, every part that has to be mutable is potentially an IPNS entry. Yeah, so the the talking that we did a lot last week was the idea of using MFS to kind of simplify that by lumping everything into MFS um, folders and then pointing the user at the root of that for a given registry, mostly because we're thinking of how we could work around IPNS being slow. If that was not the case, then you don't need to lump everything together and you can treat everything as kind of splitting them all up. And the the packages themselves should be immutable but the indexes and the of every version and then the indexes of every package or the indexes of the indexes uh, all need to be mutable um, and also trusted and signed where any individual package is its index of versions is owned by the people that have the ability to publish new versions of that thing and the overall index is the like the registry maintainer uh, trusted list of approved or not disapproved packages where spam or malicious packages get removed or DMCA takedown. Um, so those are the two like significant ones, and then you have like extra bits like search and security and license data that all start to kind of come in as extra essentially treating like how much can you treat ipfs ipld and as a database that points to the immutable packages and then sometimes you stop pointing to some of those packages when they get deleted um another potential application for mutability i was thinking about was like the problem I see with package managers right now is we're taking these enormous repos and they're gigantic and we're trying to dump them all in at once. It'd be much nicer if it could be sort of like on demand, like the ones we ingest. So we, we, uh, we just ingest the ones that are actually being used. And then there's from the, the people using the package manager, package manager clients can feedback, um, you know, lists, of packages they use and then those are the ones that we 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 ingest for them um, so i think npm on ipfs is kind of doing that already in that it's quite um lazy in the way that it will add packages to ipfs as in if it's already there uh, if it as a user requests it via npm ipfs dash npm it will lazily like go and check to see if it's already on IPFS. If not, it will go to the upstream registry, fetch the JSON, download the tarball, add the tarball to IPFS, then update the JSON with the CID to the to every individual version that was then just added, and then send that back to the user. Um, but it's also proactively doing that because that's slow not just for the, um, I mean, doesn't even use the naming, but just adding all of those packages to IPFS uh, isn't as fast as the current, like, HTTP, NPM, then 
it is also doing it proactively because npm has a changes feed you can see every time that a new version is published it's also going like oh well we might as well add this just in case someone asks for it because they're going to expect it to be speedy um if they're going to compare it to uh using it using the regular npm like i'm thinking uh like for in the debian case like it's too it's too big like we can't we don't want to mirror the whole thing um but like if individuals could say publish an ipns entry these are the packages I have installed, or I want to, I want to install. Yeah, so I'm subscribing to, you, and then we would know every, that we only have to scra scrape those ones down, and then it could it could default it could try to try IPFS first for the ones that are available, and then if if they install one that isn't on IPFS, um, it could get it from the normal Debian mirror, but then it, they could update their IPNS entry saying I'm. I want this package as well. And then we could have, centrally, we could subscribe to all the, the clients' IPNS feeds and figure out what package sets we should be uh, um, mirroring. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really interesting. Um, especially if you can get to the point where you then start to share those individual lists between users. Um, maybe within companies or um, just within communities to go like, here's a, a small subset of those things. Um, the, I guess, structurally the Debian or Ubuntu registries still need to have the, like at least the packages.gz file, which tells you everything that's possibly available, which they pull down a full copy of the actual then if they go to install one of those packages, then we could um, add that to IPFS at the point of asking for it rather than trying to add everything at once. Yeah, I haven't been a Debian developer since like 1999, but they used to have a package called Popularity Contest. And it was like, they already had that mechanism where you could send your list of packages up to a central server that would like, collect the list of, and then they, they sort of had a account of which ones were the most popular. Yeah, that still exists. Um, it's slightly skew if now because Docker and CI don't include the popularity contest. Uh, so a good number of Debian users don't ever re like report that, but it's still like there's a, in most package managers, you've got like the top 1% of packages make up 90% of all of the bandwidth. Um, where we can fairly easily work out what those are, whether or not we want to uh, like do the work to individually like count those things. I mean, if uh, we're I've... trying to just not like post everything, we could just have like a you know last recently used count. Mm -hmm. We keep the things around that being requested. Um, the other the other thing we could possibly explore would um, this is probably down the road, but like would be like federation, so that you could have multiple people ingesting, say the Debian archive, just the, they publish the ones they want, um, but then people would have to trust um, the other um, feeds they're they're federating with, but because of the immutable nature of IPFS, that would probably work really neat, I think. This is like an FYI, there, there's some stuff that the cluster team is working on that's about like community-wide clusters amongst people who are like semi-trusted. So that there probably ends up being some overlap with this as well. They're also talking about being able to shard enormous DAGs over lots and lots of IPFS nodes. So it's just like data, you know, focus is just like literally, here is everything, you have this bit, you have this bit, and you have this bit. It, it would be helpful to know, though, for, for, for some of these things that we're talking about, um, making sure we know like what the goals are or what, what would be needed for like IPNS performance. For instance, like I, I'm a little concerned about um, even just like simple like, you know, uh, 
DHT like finding providers, which is how IPFS works. Um, if you if you have IPNS records that are being run by limited numbers of people, there may not be that much that many entries in the DHT, which means that you have to actually find them quickly. And if the amount of, if the speed that we're looking that we would need in order to say make this work for you know every single package has an IPNS entry or something. If that performance was like really high, then and, and we're going to end up using DNS link or something anyway, then it may not be worth starting down that path right now, given that the alternative is to just use DNS, right? Um, so like knowing what the performance requirements are and making sure they can actually be met uh, would would help us know like what how to plan next steps. Yeah, so at least the approach that I'm imagining to begin with is that we're going to, the approach we're going to take is to encourage package managers to essentially take their existing registry and mirror it onto IPFS rather than to try and rewrite their, the way that their package managers work to be able to work more effectively with IPFS. Um, mostly because that's just a much bigger ask of them and I don't think they'll go for it. So I suspect that will be slightly further down the line, the kind of the things that Jim was talking about around being able to, to shape the, the way the data is kind of arranged so that it's smaller or it's focused on individual users or hot, kind of hotspots in individual packages. Um, I, so I, I think it's going to be a case of like, we're going to use DNS as like, we trust the registry owner because they have control of the DNS, the DNS to point into the IPFS uh, kind of world rather than, rather than try and have them kind of have a, or share a, an IPNS for every individual package and every user. A lot of the language package managers do no signing whatsoever right now. They're entirely reliant on their, uh, their DNS and their central database to, um, to kind of infer any kind of ownership. So trying to get those things to change will definitely be a harder, like for new package managers, we can definitely um, encourage people to think about that in a slightly different way. Um, but for existing ones, we're going to have to start by trying to support the like some of the use cases that that work easily to get them up and running before trying to jump on more advanced. Yeah, but so does so does that mean it's more about like update speeds than it is about the initial resolution? Because you're just using one like mega index. So if it takes you like a minute to find the mega index but all of the updates to it are really fast, you're probably okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, we should probably draw this to a close uh, because the team weekly sync is starting. Oh, oh yes. Two minutes ago. Oh. Um, but yeah, maybe we should put some time in the diary to talk about this stuff more because I think it's going to be very important to you know, get all the priorities right. Cool. Uh, I'm going to stop recording now. Uh, thank you very much for coming to the uh, Package Managers Weekly Sync. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.